The big diesel surveyed the shed. Not bad, he said. I've seen worse. At least you're all clean. The engines gaped. It's not your fault, he went on, but you're all out of date. Your controller should scrap you and get engines like me. A fill of oil, a touch on the starter, and I'm off with no bother, no waiting. They have to fuss around you for hours before you're ready. At last, the engines found their voices. An inspector had to come and stop the noise. They held an indignation meeting early next morning round the turntable. Disgraceful, rumbled Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, spluttered Henry. To say such things to us, burst out Donald and Douglas. It's to teach him a lesson we'd be wanting. But no one had any good ideas, and at last they all went off to work, except for Duck and Stepney. Never mind, said Duck. We'll be sure to think of something. We'll have to be quick then, warned Stepney. But their chance came sooner than expected. Diesel purred comfortably. He was being warmed up well before time. An inspector watched the fitter making adjustments. The wind tugged at the inspector's hat. The fitter replaced the air intake cover. OK, mate, he said. Diesel saw his coaches waiting at the platform. He rolled proudly towards them. Look at me, Duck and Stepney, he purred. Now I'll show you something. He advanced a few yards. Then suddenly he coughed, faltered, choked, and stopped. The inspector, meanwhile, had seen nothing of this. He was looking for his hat. Can we help you at all? asked Duck and Stepney sweetly. Diesel seethed with baffled fury as they pushed him back to the shed. My hat! exclaimed the inspector as the cavalcade went by. Bother your hat, said the fat controller crossly. The train's due out in ten minutes, and you'll have to take it, Duck. Duck looked doubtful, but when Stepney asked, Can I help him, sir? He felt better. The fat controller was pleased too, and hurried away almost cheerfully to make the arrangements. The engines and their crews made careful plans. A good start... Everything on a job like this, warned Stepney. So as they backed down, they dropped sand on the rails, rolling it firm with their wheels. Both controllers were there to see them off. Gordon will take over from halfway, said the fat controller. Shall get the train there, never mind about being late. Good luck. Don't worry, sirs, smiled Stepney. We'll get there and be early too. They stood waiting, sizzling with excitement, ready and eager to be off. At last, the guard's flag waved. The engines dug their wheels into the sand and gave a mighty heave. Come on, come on, puffed Duck, while Stepney barked excitedly in front. Moving carefully over the points, they reached the open line. Now for a sprint, puffed Duck. I'm ready when you are, woof Stepney. Faster and faster they went till their wheels were turning at such speed that the side rods were merely blurred. Under clear signals, they whizzed through Edward Station and charged at Gordon's Hill beyond. They felt the drag of their 15 coaches here. It was hard work, but once over the top, the last 10 miles were plain running. They 
swept into the big station in fine style. Hello, said Gordon. You're early. That's one in the headlamp for old Diesel. Have you heard the latest? He chuckled. Diesel had sucked the inspector's hat into his air pipe. That's why he broke down. James says he's sick as boiler sludge and sulking in the shed. Out of date, are we? Ho, ho, ho. And still laughing, Gordon puffed away. Everyone was sad the next day when Stepney had to go. All the engines who could came to see him off. The fat controller made a speech and so did Stepney's controller. Donald and Douglas made everyone sing Auld Lang Syne. And then Stepney and his controller puffed off to a chorus of cheers and whistles. But what about Diesel? He'd slipped away the night before. He said goodbye to no one, but left two things behind. The nasty smell of bad manners and a battered bowler hat.